This is question number three for part F, long answer questions or long questions. Now, this one says individuals and organizations around the world make extensive use of information technology, IT systems. Uh, there is a growing awareness of environmental issues relating to the use of IT. Discuss how environmental concerns impact the use of IT by individuals and organizations. You should consider hardware, energy consumption, recycling, working practices. Hardware is simply, again, the physical or the tangible components of a computer system. Energy consumption, how much power or current is being used, is typically power, always go back to power. Recycling, can this thing be recycled? Is it easily recycled? And in some cases, how much of it can be reused in something else? Working practices, what do people actually do at the moment to get rid of stuff, to recycle stuff, to reuse hardware, to um, how much energy consumption is actually being taken. Okay, so first we have hardware and we have individuals and organizations should consider how their hardware is produced. Production of hardware uses large amounts of raw materials. Production of hardware requires large amounts of energy in the manufacturing process. I think um, a mobile phone needs something like X hundreds amount of gallons of water to make. And look, we all have mobile smartphones or smart mobile phones. The shipping of new hardware also uses raw materials, example, packaging and the energy both impact on natural, often diminishing resources, meaning these resources do not replenish themselves, right? So when we use the raw materials or the raw resources, we never, ever get them back. So for example, mining, I think it's cobalt that's using batteries for um, electric cars, smartphones, tablets, TV, so on and so forth. We'll never get that resource back. And look, almost every single person in the UK has a mobile phone, a tablet, smart TV, so many electric cars coming out now, those resources will never get again. So that is a concern. This is how hardware is a concern. Uh, the next one, the solution. Before purchasing or upgrading to a new hardware, both individuals and organizations should consider whether the new hardware is necessary or is it purchased only because it is available. Example, new iPhone for an individual. Many people only upgrade their iPhones because there's a new one, it's slightly nicer, and the previous one is not necessarily because they need the new phone or new iPhone, new Android phone. They should also consider, is the cost to the environment worth the benefits to the individual organization? So getting a new iPhone every single year, you can probably afford it because here in the UK, people aren't really starving. They're not really dying for hunger. We can afford things typically, right? However, think about all the glass, cobalt, silicon, water, plastic, rubber, all the things being used for your one mobile phone that's never going to go back into the earth. So once it's used, that's it. Could the performance of current systems be improved by replacing elements, example, adding additional RAM to PC, laptops, which would reduce the environmental impact, purchasing improved software, which would have no environmental impact to some degree, right? Obviously, software still need PC to design them and develop them. Replacing elements, example, adding additional RAM. Now, this is something I always, always, always tell people because I fix computers, I build PCs as well. When anyone comes to me and says, oh, my PC is moving slow, my laptop's moving slow, the last thing I recommend is for them to go and buy or build a new one. The very, very, very first thing I do, I check if they have a hard drive or an SSD. So this is linking back to some stuff in unit one as well. I check if they have a hard drive or SSD. Remember, SSD is a newer technology, faster. Yes, it's more expensive, per gigabyte but it's such a benefit that in some cases um, it is five between five and ten times faster than the traditional hard drive which would mean the pc will go a lot will work a lot lot faster and i also look at how much ram they have somebody with a pc 10 plus years would probably have four gigabytes of ram and as we know our phones have double that in some cases so what i recommend buy an ssd i'll swap the ssd out i'll put windows 11 or 10 on there that's normally that normally makes it much faster already. And also, I would maybe get some more RAM. So moving from 4 gigabytes, I might add an extra 8 gigabytes, make it 12, or add an extra 4 to make it 8. 8 gigabytes is like a sweet spot right now for typical for the typical person using a PC. But anyways, I digress. Uh, energy consumption. The concern. Organizations use high levels of energy for running or for the running of their businesses. This will have an impact on financial impact from buying the energy. So the company has to spend more money to buy the actual electric. And especially now where gas prices and electric prices have actually doubled or tripled for some people. Uh, some companies in the UK are actually closing. So this has been recorded on the 27th of September 2022. Many small companies in, in the UK cannot 
um, run anymore because your electric bill, their gas bill is too much and they won't be able to continue because it's costing them too much money. Environmental impact through the release of greenhouse gases from the energy production process. So fossil fuels, so petrol, diesel, etc. Um, they come from fossils that are found under the earth and those release greenhouse gases and those greenhouse gases then warm up the earth. I'm sure you guys have heard of global warming. This is what causes it in this is what this is a large fraction of what causes it the solution individuals within an organization must be encouraged to switch off devices at the end of the day this almost never happens most schools and companies i've worked at they simply log out and leave those pcs running all night even though they are in sleep mode or hibernation mode they still burn some electric right? and imagine if you're a company that has or a school that has hundreds hundreds of pcs that adds up Switch devices to standby during working hours. So if you have to step out of your office for 10, 20 minutes, an hour for lunch, put your device on standby. It uses roughly 70 to 90% less power, I believe. Organizations can also use IT to reduce energy consumption by creating stroke using energy efficient air conditioning systems. That's very true. Using green energy, example, solar panels and wind. This is something I want on my house personally. Again, gas prices have gone up. Having um, wind power or solar power will be a massive, massive help because it's free. Once you buy that thing and once it doesn't break down, you can heat your house, for example, very cheaply using these things. Smart meters within the working environment. I'm going to buy one of those Google Nest smart heating home systems where I can turn my heating off from my bed. Um, I don't have to have my heating on at random times. I could set it so that it comes on, I wake up at like 6, 7 a.m. in the morning. Sometimes it comes on an hour before I wake up and goes off. So the house is warm when I wake up, warm when I'm getting ready. I come home at like, let's say, 5, 6, 7 p.m. It's warm then and it goes off again. So these smart devices help us to save money as well. Um, let's look at, uh, sorry, I didn't read that last one. Org organizations can encourage employees to create paperless environments. This is a, something I'm a very, very, very massive advocate for. Again, I teach IT, computer science and engineering. So for me, it's very, very easy to do this. I have, in my previous schools, used Microsoft Teams or Google Classroom a lot and tried to show other teachers how to use it because the constant printing of paper and, oh, this is wrong, you need, you need to print it again, doesn't seem very sensible. It's not very efficient as well. Next one is recycling the concern. Environmental impact from the, imp uh, the improper disposal of old hardware may end up in landfill sites, creates toxic waste. So the UK and other, let's say, developed or uh, first world countries are guilty of this. What many, many countries do is they rent or buy a plane to simply bring old hardware to some countries in third world countries. And because those governments in some cases are either corrupt or they don't care too much about things. They allow these foreign ent entities or even entities within their own country to simply dump landfills with, with toxic items, toxic waste, which then goes and poisons the water supply and the food and the ground and so on and so forth. This is very, very bad and it's a very big thing. The solution, when the decision has been made to upgrade, the organization must consider how to dispose of old hardware. Can the whole device be used by another individual? That's one I always do. Um, or organization. Phones can be passed on by an individual for uh, use by a charity, sold to another user. Similar PCs may be passed to organizations in this country, developing countries. Exam um, these are basic examples, right? So if you're finished using something, that doesn't mean it is useless. Someone else can use it. So I typically tend to sell my phones rather than put them down in a drawer and not use them. So every year or every couple of years when I do get an upgrade, I sell my phone. I give it to someone who is actually going to use it. Um, where are we now? Can parts of the device be recycled? Example, RAM taken from one PC. This is something I do again because I fix laptops, PCs, build, um, build PCs. I always have extra sticks of RAM. So when someone wants me to upgrade their PC, I can say, oh, you can have this stick of RAM for free because I took it from a PC which I had to dismantle, so on and so forth. At a basic level, materials such as metals can be removed from devices and recycled. Metals can be relatively easily melted and used in the production of other items. So printer cartridges can be refilled or recycled. I used to take mine to the recycling center, but I haven't printed anything in a very long time, so I don't use that much ink. Working practices. So now we consider how individuals and organizations can adapt their current working practices to reduce their environmental impact. Solution. Removing working um, 
so sorry, not remove her. Remote working, working from home has a positive effect on the environment as it reduces the need for traveling, commuting, reducing both energy consumption and pollution. This I am a massive fan of, partly because I'm lazy and partly because it's it actually helps everyone once people do what they're supposed to do. For example, not traveling to work in the morning means that the individual can sleep longer, right? But that's not the main thing. They don't have to get on a train or a bus or a car to get to work which uses some form of fossil fuel at some stage. They don't have to go to work. And everyone in the office is using computers for hours and hours on end, burning electricity, using water, people at home. It's much cheaper for the company as well. Um, next one, we have modern day technology such as, such as high quality communication and security systems are now well established and organizations should consider when it is feasible to set up systems which allow employees to work remotely individuals now have access to many portable devices which can be used yeah so quite simply put people have laptops at home most working people in the uk now have internet at home have access to a smart device mobile phone laptop tablet so on and so forth um, a smart tv with a browser can access google chrome um, and if you can access google chrome you, you can access google drive you can access microsoft OneDrive, so on and so forth so people can work from home it's relatively easy for most people if they choose to do that Next one, organizations should also encourage individuals to reduce the use of consumables. Example, paper. I'm a, again, I'm a big fan of not printing, having everything digitally. It's not the best way to read and highlight things sometimes, but if we're trying to save the environment, this needs to be considered. Printer cartridges and toner by introducing paperless environments. Example, not printing emails. And that is it. That was, again, very quick, but I need to get through this as quickly as possible and provide as much information as I can. I have one more question in this series and then I'm going to move on to another unit. So hopefully you guys find this useful. Thank you for watching.